revenge on one of two teams to beat Vegas this year and put the Aces in first place with a win. This is bigger than basketball. None of us win until we all do. So we'll always fight like hell. This is bigger than one name on a jersey or hashtag. When you see us, know that we're representing for all of them. This is bigger than our jump shots. This is bigger than our stats. This is bigger than our championship. We're the WNBA, and we're bigger than ball. Welcome you to Bradenton, Florida, home of IMG Academy, where the second place Las Vegas Aces currently getting hyped up by one of their family members who isn't here, Kelsey Plum, and trying with a win to book the Aces in a tie for first place with less than two weeks to play in the regular season. And with that, we welcome you into our telecast tonight, Sean Salisbury and Leah Secondo, but Leah, as we take a look at Phoenix now and what they've been able to do to surge up the standings, it is because they've gotten some vintage performances from Diana Taurasi. Can't say enough about Diana Taurasi. She's still wowing her teammates, the opponents, the coaches, the fans. After 16 seasons in the W, averaging 18.2 points per game, 4.8 rebounds and 5 assists this season. She lit it up with four threes the last time these two teams met, along with 22 points and 10 assists. One of her two double-doubles on the year. Karasi is all over the board. And with that, Karasi, you just have to figure out a way to contest her shots. It will be a challenge, certainly, tonight for Vegas. On the flip side, Asia Wilson, she runs it out in transition. She's solid from anywhere inside the elbow in, and she knows how to get to the free throw line. The only player in the W in the top six in rebounding, scoring, and in block shots for this Vegas team. They will need to establish that inside game tonight against Phoenix. Look at her stats within the last four games, Sean. Just off the charts, averaging 22.5 points per game. And had more than 20 in all four of those games, including a monster performance against Seattle, and deservedly so, the Western Conference Player of the Month. And there's the Coach of the Month in the WNBA, Bill Lambeer. And is starting five, Lindsey Allen, who did not play in the loss of Phoenix earlier this year in the starting lineup. And as Sandy Brondello trots out the seventh different starting lineup for her team this year. Trying to put together the pieces, but Phoenix has been really playing strong and resilient despite a multitude of problems these last couple of weeks. Yeah, Sean, you know, one thing that Sidney Brondello had said to us before the game started tonight, that the adversity that her team has, has had thus far this season, and they certainly have had their share. This lineup that she has is probably a little bit faster than what we have normally been accustomed to seeing with this Phoenix squad. And right off the bat, Skylar Diggins-Smith, who had 25 points in a win on Sunday, makes it two to nothing, Mercury. Kayla McBride comes up short. The long rebound controlled by Kia Vaughn. Diggins Smith, who had 13 points in the fourth quarter, dishes back to Vaughn. And she sticks the long two. How impressive has she been since Brittany Griner left the wobble? She has been so impressive. Getting to her spots early in the offensive set. You saw how quickly she ran into the corner. No one picked her up, and she had that wide open, easy shot on the baseline. Sophie Cunningham starting in place of Shatori Walker Kimbrough following the four point win over Minnesota where Phoenix got off to a hot start led by 15 after the first quarter and held on for dear life late to win their third consecutive game and improved in nine and seven. It was Sophie Diggins Cunningham, Sean, who, uh, in that last meeting between these two teams, she lit it up with 11 points. So, you know, that roster moves, you look at who you're playing up against and Sandy Brondello going with Sophie Cunningham tonight. 
Lindsay Allen, who did not play in that first meeting, drives inside, but misses the layup. Tarasi from deep three-point range, and the GOAT knocks it in for her first triple tonight. Already a 7-0 score. Great feed inside, but McBride blocked from behind. Back to Wilson. Can't get Vegas on the board. Now Angel McCautry hangs and hits. A much needed basket, two minutes in. Rossi can't hit another one and the rebound to Wilson. Las Vegas has been one of the most consistent teams this entire season. Allen misses inside, got it back. And an extra chance. Wilson going against Brianna Turner, goes right by and gets the and one. Nice hard drive to the hoop by Asia Wilson, and this is what it's all about, that driving uh, sharp step that she has now to complete the three-point play. And what a matchup that is going to be to watch tonight. Asia Wilson on Brianna Turner. Breezy's been phenomenal. 15 rebounds and 17 rebounds in two of the past three games as she has really picked up the slack on the boards to help lead the Mercury to a couple of clutch wins. But you know Vegas' identity is getting to the free throw line and getting their opponent in all kinds of foul trouble. Now a two point game, Tarasi's second basket picks it back up to four. Wilson calls for it again. Falling away off the mark. Deep pass into Cunningham. And muffles it up for two. She was waiting for somebody on the defense to bite so she could have an opportunity for a three-point play. Nice and patient there, so Sophie Cunningham. Another strong start from Phoenix. Looking to win its fourth straight game and tenth this year. Wilson powers up and gets the soft touch. Tarasi whips it inside, Turner ready to secure another two. Turner's numbers the last four games have certainly helped take a little bit of the load off. You want that compliment that Skylar Diggins and Diana Tarasi have provided. McBride finishes the oop. Got caught napping on the backdoor cut. These two had a track meet when they met on July 31st, the 102-95 Phoenix win. And to start, both attacks clicking early as Diggins Smith hits another jumper. And in that first meeting, Mercury's big four of Hartley, Griner, Tarasi, and Diggins Smith combined for 77 of the 102 points. Wilson draws the double. Can't hit the tough fadeaway. Swords taps it out, and Jackie Young collects the offensive board. Right, you, you made a good point there. Griner and Hartley were, were really key offensive sparks in that first meeting between those, you know, between those two teams. So Phoenix has to figure out a way to make up those points tonight, and certainly the way that they have, each team has come out running tonight, that's not gonna be a problem. After the Wilson lay-in, Vaughn misses it short. Back to McBride. That three is good. After a slow start, McBride hits back-to-back -back baskets. But Las Vegas' identity is on the defensive end. Yes. As Tarazzi is free for another shot. 
And this is the long one. But Phoenix is getting a lot of good looks early. Yeah, yeah they are getting some really good looks. And uh, certainly, you know, the perimeter defense is going to be tested tonight. And there's number two in three-point uh, three field goal defense. So this brings that fun challenge between these two teams tonight. McCautry gives the Aces the lead. With four minutes to play in the first quarter. But Tarasti <laughs> takes it right back. Eight points now for the WNBA's all-time leading scorer. It's put the team on her back these last couple of games. Young can't answer. Digging Smith on the break. Cunningham with a nice ball fake. Trying to dish to Turner. Couldn't control it. McCautry going on the floor. Draws the foul. We take a timeout on the floor. Both teams trying to catch their breath as the offenses are clicking early in Bradenton. Diana Taurasi's eight early points has Phoenix ahead of Las Vegas, 18 to 16. Sean Salisbury and Leah Sicando with you tonight. And Leah, right after her fifth 20-point game against Minnesota this season, she's picking up right where she left off and looking really comfortable. You know, Cindy Brandello said as a coach, I enjoy just watching her play. And what is there not to enjoy? Because you never know what trick is going to come out of Diana Taurasi's hand. You're supposed to pull her off the three-point line. Well, this is about as far as you can pull somebody away from the three-point line. A quick, real quick trigger on the release, and then you pull her away, and she has enough gapping room to drive to the hoop. Diana Taurasi is just so smart. Their teammates continuously say that they can't get enough time around her just to kind of soak in everything she brings to the basketball court. And she's having fun, Sean. And that right there is the biggest part of it. If you're having fun, you play relaxed, and it just kind of just trickles down to the rest of your teammates on the court. Rossi now takes a seat on the bench. Jerrica Hamby comes in for the first time for Las Vegas. McBride slips through and travels before she released the shot. Tori Walker, Kimbrough, Shea Petty, and Alana Smith also come in. We've seen just about every player that'll play for Phoenix tonight. Limited depth, but some gutsy performances this past weekend. Digging Smith. Off the backboard, Hamby stores for the rebound. And now wants to push with Vegas down two. 
Had it poked away by Walker Kimbrough. Mm -hmm. Phoenix missing so many different key pieces tonight for their team. And Tarasi and I think even Skylar Diggins, you, you mentioned uh, Kia Vaughn off the top of the show. Uh, certainly three key pieces that I think need to consistently trip, contribute to this team. And it's not just about scoring. You come in, you get a board, you get a steal, you get an offensive board. Those are the different pieces that will help your team. And that's what Sandy Brondella said too, is we like Shea Petty and what she brings mm -hmm. as the 31 year old veteran. That's right. Even though she's just in her second year playing in the WNBA. Driving inside, Sugar Rogers ties it up. She's coming off her own 12-point performance in Las Vegas' last win against New York on Saturday. Sugar Rogers' play has consistently increased in different ways, and she has embraced it. You know, some nights she doesn't get any PT. Some nights she's able to step up and come out with that defensive intensity, and then anything she's bringing on the offensive side is certainly a plus for this Vegas squad. Going inside, Walker Kimbrough draws the foul. That previous foul, the first on Rodgers. And now the first team foul in the last two minutes, and it'll be Asia Wilson's first personal. And that's going to be interesting too, Leah, because Danielle Robinson, as Coach Lambeer said right before the game, that she's been having some bad headaches mm -hmm. and not expected to play tonight. But those three off the bench, Hamby, Young, and Rogers, well, they are so good at bringing that energy and defense, as you mentioned, and the main reason why Las Vegas is 12-3 and three this year. Right, and, and it is really unfortunate with uh, Daniel Robinson. They have loved every aspect that she has brought to their team in a short period of time. She's been involved with the aspect of what Bill Lambeer wants to do with this squad, and uh, hopefully she'll be able to get over those headaches uh, quickly and be back on the floor to contribute. Hamby doesn't give up after being blocked by Alana Smith. Tied at 20, going into the final minute and a half of the first quarter. Smith buries it. Second year center out of Stanford. The big three for Phoenix is Rogers. Knocks another one down. The offense is feeling good early despite the late start. Diggins Smith hesitates, couldn't bank it in. Las Vegas looking to beat one of two teams that has defeated them this year. Wilson travels inside. But it seems like an eternity has passed since that July 31st <laughs> meeting. It certainly has. You think about the number of games played in between. The scout is, has changed drastically. The, uh, the talent on the floor has changed. Bill Lambeer's hair has changed. The way these two teams have been playing, going up and down the floor, he might yeah. be, need the headband again. Yeah. Like I'm sweating just watching these two teams run. Great pass yeah, inside. Walker Kimbrough all alone finishes the feed from Tarasi. Rogers resets, penetrates inside. Finds Jackie Young, bumped, and finishes. An and one for Jackie Young. Jackie Young is so versatile for this Aces team. Look at driving right, straight down the lane. A versatile piece, she can play the one, the two, and the three for Bill Lambeer. And that's what you read, need right now, especially with the depletion of different lineups. Versatility on the floor to give somebody a break. Great job. Shot clock turned down. We've already seen three different lead changes in the first quarter. Tarasi connects. What a great offensive display in the first quarter. Rogers heaves it up. 
and can't hit. And after the first quarter of play, Phoenix with another hot offensive start. They'll take a 27-26 lead into the second quarter when we return. Broadcast are certainly living up to the billing. Uh, Diana Taurasi couldn't step any further out from three. She's already got into double figures. And of course, Asia Wilson on the flip side doing what she does best, driving hard to the basket. Already seven points on the night, trying to make things happen inside the paint, Sean, for this Vegas team. They already have 18 points in the paint in just the first quarter of play. Two of the top four scores in the WNBA, like you said, living up to the billing in this offensive showdown. Wilson gives it up, and Young hits another shot. And we already have the fifth lead change of the game here in the opening minute of the second quarter. Phoenix down a three-game win streak. Brianna Turner back into the game. Can't hit. Hamby fights for the rebound and draws the personal on Alana Smith. A little bit smaller, faster lineup for Bill Lambeer right now out on the floor. We'll see how they push this ball up the floor a little bit quicker. He expected to play Sugar, Rogers, and Jackie Young a little bit more tonight. And uh, th the combination, Jackie, maybe a little bit more at the one this evening. We'll see how that plays out for Vegas. And here is Danielle Robinson. into the game here is Rogers and hit the pull up Walker Kimbrough who's caught fire a couple of times this year Patty working inside gives it back to Tarasi and she hits another one Give her 13, just over a minute into the second quarter. Wilson wants it on the ISO. 
Too strong, trying to attack Turner, who already has two personal fouls. Tarasi, foul going up. And a smart move by the veteran to draw the foul on the second year guard. You, you've got to figure out a way to make Diana Tarasi at least try to feel, make her feel uncomfortable. Up at the top, and everyone is late collapsing and recognizing where three is. You've got to understand where three is. It's uh, like the highlight of the scout. And getting out on her late or just trying to jab at her is not going to work because Diana Tarasi, if she doesn't nail the shot, she's going to drive the hoop, figure out a way to get to the free throw line where she has been spectacular as well this season. Bill Lambier maybe saying a prayer. As if nothing else, it forces a miss on the third free throw, but Tarasi already has 15 points. Young frees herself up. Reset to McBride. And she was blocked by Walker Kimbrough. The offense has been efficient. But Venus has come up with some big stops as Tarasi has that one go in and out. Got to pick her up at half court, Leah. Yeah, absolutely. It's never too far. Young with space drains another J. Eddie slashes inside. Back to Walker Kimbrough. And another one goes down. The ball yeah. movement has been very effective early. Ten assists on 13 made shots for the Mercury. This is against arguably the best defensive team in the WNBA. Hamby gets the three to fall. Well, each team is certainly matching the intensity tonight, Sean. And, uh, you know, I... We, we could certainly see a game back uh, where we were the, the last meeting between these two on July 31st, hitting the century mark. Can't, can't get the tough finish. You can see Wilson <laughs> saying, let it go out, let's get a breather for a second because this pace has been <laughs> tremendous to start in the first half. Everybody getting a piece in the scoring column. 13 different players have already scored just over three minutes into the second quarter. The number two score in the WNBA, Asia Wilson. Off the mark on the fadeaway. She's now three of nine from the field. Tarasi back to Smith. Drives inside and gets the shot to go off glass. Question for Phoenix is, how can they sustain this hot start? Young misses the mark, and that's what we saw just the other day for the Mercury, Leah, was they got up by 15 at the end of the first quarter, but then it was in the second half where they only scored 32 points and made three of 18 shots from downtown. Right, and and, and again, that goes back to that, that lull that they sometimes have in that third quarter especially. Back to Smith. Can't hit another one. Turner fighting for the offensive rebound. But it'll go back to Las Vegas. Timeout on the floor. Las Vegas and Erica Hamby looking to come back and take the lead when we return.
Just five games left in the regular season. And at least for the Aces, what's on the line these next couple of games is they want to get that very nice double bye <laughs> and straight to the conference semifinals because you get a couple of days of extra rest, but you're also not playing in that single elimination playoff game. Really, five through eight, they play in that single elimination situation, and you don't want to be on the bottom half of that. Minnesota and Chicago clinching tonight with Indiana's loss. Minnesota clinched for the 10th consecutive trip to the WNBA playoffs. A veteran move by Jackie Young to wait for Skylar Diggins-Smith to get in the air before drawing what is the Phoenix's guard's first personal foul. Aaliyah, this is what Phoenix has done really well in the first half. This season, Las Vegas averages the most free throw attempts per game at 24. But this is just the second trip to the line for Vegas. And Sandy Brondello and her defense, especially with the limited front court, you really can't foul against this team. No, and her, her front court, excuse me, her front court has done a great job tonight. Lena Smith getting uh, a, a lot of playing time here and really helping out. And, you know, early on, with the changes in, in the front court, Smith not only was able to contribute, but had contribute with some block shots, with some steals, with some key rebounds. You can tell, and there's a block right there. You can tell that she's starting to feel more comfortable in the setting with the reps that she's getting. And a second rejection on the possession. Alana Smith keeping Phoenix ahead. Sophie Cunningham. Diggins Smith pass tipped and intercepted by Kayla McBride. Midway through the second quarter, both the pass in and Hamby finishes. Looking like another six Women of the Year award. Be the third WNBA player to win it multiple times, along with Dewana Bonner and Allie Quigley. A lot of Smith catch and shoot. Angel McCautry, the rebound. Right back to Wilson. Had a nice. step on Brianna Turner. Angel playing, lim Angel playing limited minutes there in, in the first uh, quarter of play and uh, back out on the floor. And a timeout called by Sandy Brondello with the Las Vegas run starting. Angel McCautry giving it to the MVP, Asia Wilson. And Las Vegas leads it by three.
earlier today, the WNBA announced its players of the month. Courtney Vandersloot for the Eastern Conference and Asia Wilson for the West after some incredible performances. And how about Crystal Dangerfield, drafted number 16 and earning Rookie of the Month honors. And Bill Lambeer after an 11-1 month for Las Vegas named the Coach of the Month. But really, you take a look at what's happened the last nine or ten days. Potentially, Skylar Diggins Smith or Diana Taurasi is the best yep. players in the league. Certainly, uh, with all that has transpired for this Phoenix Mercury team, trying to find some balance with some wins, getting into the winning column, getting through the adversity on this three game win streak right now. And certainly, no question, Sean, if. They make a deep run into the playoffs and rise towards the top. Skylar Diggins Smith and Diana Taurasi will be in the conversation for MVP honors in this league. Back to back threes out of the timeout. Phoenix in a flash takes the lead off the roll. And he with another lay in. So with nine points off the bench to go with seven rebounds. Megan Smith floats it back to Vaughn. That's been her sweet spot the last few games. And miscommunication creates a second chance for the Mercury. Right back to Tarasi. Oh, are you kidding me? They're all going in for the GOAT tonight. 21 first half points on five of eight shooting from downtown. And another turnover. McCautry lost it. Walker Gimbro can't finish. Biggin Smith's follow won't go. Tarasi uses one. With Walker Kimbro coming back, but come on, are you serious with this one? <laughs> that's at least what 10 feet back. And that's player that's having fun right there. Gotta love it. Kind of like when I'm trying to pick up a spare at the bowling alley and you, you start doing exactly. the little you dance the thing slide, and it's going to work. Do the slide, talk it in, little English. Not crazy if it works. Yeah. And Definitely everything's working for Diana Taurasi right now, defending Angel McCautry. Stripped it. McCautry got it back, but left it short. Megan Smith in transition. Off the screen from Vaughn. Jay Petty can't connect, but her miss goes right back to her. Diggins Smith recognizing Jackie Young right in her grill, forces the foul, and that'll be Young's second personal. Well, Bill Lambeer not just used to seeing this from his team. On the streak where they've won 11 of the last 12, his team has only given up more than 85 points one time. That was in a 96-92 win against Dallas. Tarasi can't get the lucky bounce this time around. With under two to play, Phoenix continues to lead against the number two team in the league. Young can't cut the deficit in half. Wilson on the floor. Somehow sneaks it to McBride. Young thought about the three, gives it inside. Mismatch, and Wilson takes advantage. Wilson late getting back. Tarasi hangs another one. 24 first half points. Got to get some of that dirt off your shoulder there, Diana. A little swagger. An illegal screen called against Erica Hamby. I think we're running out of superlatives. It, it, you know, it, and it's just jaw dropping. She, you know, takes the bounce and and works like a like a, a football player coming off of the you know working off of the tackles during practice and stuff. It's just it, amazing what Diana Taurasi can do. With and without the basketball, he's trying to free herself up inside right now. And already tying a season high of eight field goals made that she had when she put up 34 points 
wearing Kobe Bryant's name on the back of her jersey last Sunday. And she has certainly brought the Mamba mentality ever since that day. In a game where she made 11 free throws, helped secure the first of now three consecutive Mercury wins. Trying to make it four here tonight to tie the streak of their longest win streak this year. McBride off the mark again. And a chance to extend the five-point lead. Petty slips it back. And Vaughn knocks down another jumper. You know what the, the scary part of this is if you're if you're Vegas trying to defend this. Now Phoenix is getting several players into the mix of the offensive attack. It's making it extremely hard to figure out how to defend at the opposite end of, of the floor, whether it's Smith coming in off the bench, Walker Kimbrough coming in off the bench, Skylar Diggins Smith doing her thing, getting to the hoop, Kia Vaughn hitting those elbow shots at key times. Foul on Kia Vaughn, it's her first personal. And that's what you have to remember, too, about Phoenix's offense, Leah, is that they're number one in the WNBA in assist percentage, meaning that they get nearly 70% of their baskets assisted on. And tonight, they're 15 of 19, nearly 8%. The free throws cut the deficit to five. With the shot clock turned off, Phoenix can hold and take a lead into the locker room again. Mercury undefeated this year when they're up at the half. Diggins Smith away from the screen. Loses the handle, but it'll stay here with 4.9. And a timeout called by Stanley Brondello. Looking to draw up one final successful play in the first half where her team hasn't missed much. 50% from the floor and 50 first half points. Players on the floor, looking good and feeling good in this first half. Inbound to Rossi, puts it up. They're gonna say it was last touch by an Aces defender. With still one final chance to yep. extend the five point lead. Plenty of time, somebody come hard off a screen. The lob to Rossi at the buzzer. Gets it to go. <laughs> a virtuoso performance in the first half. 26 points for Diana Taurasi and the Mercury tie their game high lead of seven points. Just getting a nice roll and touch. Good spacing there against McBride and when things are good, things are good. Let's head to the locker room and regroup. Phoenix this year 6-0 win leading at the half. And this final shot for Diana Taurasi caps another incredible shooting performance asia wilson and the las vegas aces looking for answers as they head into the locker room it's a 52 45 lead for the mercury at the break
than two weeks remaining in the WNBA regular season. And now let's check in with Diana Taurasi and a great conversation. Believing in women is just believing in equality. I started covering the WNBA back in 2008 as a radio analyst for the Atlanta Dream. These women are not only the most athletic and gifted basketball players in all the world, but they are also amazing people. I just felt like their stories needed to be told. It's important for the world to see women in powerful positions. The more that we can showcase not only who these women are as players, but who they aspire to be as business owners and, and who they are as mothers. I started Rising Media Stars out of a need, honestly. You know, it's a program that serves as somewhat of a transition for young women who want to get into sports broadcasting, but haven't quite been able to get their footing in the business or want to grow in the early years of their career. We created it out of a need for more women of color in media. And that's what Rising Media Stars is, is targeted to impacting is the diversity that we see in sports broadcasts. Just a tremendous ambassador for the WNBA, LaChina Robinson on all fronts, great all around. And now, before we take another timeout, let's check in on the best plays in the WNBA from the week five of action. Stewart flags it down, Bays and hits. Jimmy gets it quickly, and there's the record for an unforgettable moment in WNBA history. Candid oh. Parker with the baseball pass. Excellent vision of Carlos. Kennedy Carter just Blowing down Route 75 here, South Florida. Pretty exciting. My goodness. Franchise record. 20 rebounds. Marina Mabry, she recognizes Kayla Thornton is beating everybody down the floor. Owner and up the floor. Watch this. Whoop. January. Hands it off. Still more in store for these final two weeks of the WNBA season. And when we come back, we'll check in on the two earlier games tonight.
Halftime between Phoenix and Las Vegas, where the Mercury lead it by seven. And earlier tonight, what a performance all around by the Connecticut Sun picking up another win. And Duana Bonner, number 24, driving the lane, moving up to 19th all time in scoring with her 27 points tonight for the Connecticut Sun. And they were able to hold off a very feisty New York Liberty team. And the difference, I think, where they outscored the Liberty, out rebounded the Liberty 32 to 45. Uh, and you see some of the other scorers around the league tonight with the Dream taking care of the Fever 102 to 90 with the Fever loss that helped Minnesota and Chicago clinch playoff spots. The Lynx now have been in the playoffs for what will be the 10th consecutive year. You can't say enough about the job Cheryl Reeve has done with that group. And also Chicago clinching back-to-back -back playoff berths, trying to go further than they did last year when they had their hearts broken by this Las Vegas club. Still plenty left to see with less than two weeks to play in the WNBA season. When we come back, the third quarter between the Mercury and the Aces. Ready for the second half of this track meet between Phoenix and Las Vegas, where the Mercury lead by seven. Sean Salisbury and Leah Secondo with you tonight. And what an offensive performance by so many, but it was Diana Taurasi and the rest of the pack shooting. Yeah, it was Diana's show in, in the first half, and she's one off of her season high with six threes in that first half of play. Just incredible everywhere on the court for this Phoenix Mercury team. 12 consecutive double-figure games now and back-to-back 20-plus -back games for Diana Taurasi. And you, you, you know, you talk about trying to defend her, getting out and pushing her off the line. There's not too much more you can push her away from the line. Everything working well for Diana Taurasi and her team right now. And despite the advantage on the boards for Las Vegas, the defense around the perimeter where they struggled in that first meeting with Phoenix back on July 31st, they gave up a season high 102, and Phoenix already halfway there again. 
Yeah, you know, and it's it, it's crazy. Uh, we are in the mix, in the mode to hit the century mark very easily in this second or half of play, third and fourth quarters of basketball as the team heads out to the floor. Um, Skylar Diggins Smith and Diana Taurasi, and I, if I'm if I'm a teammate of Diana Taurasi, I, I'm I'm looking for a low five too. I want to feel a little bit of what she's feeling out on the court. Give me some of that mojo. And the important thing to remember too with Phoenix is they had a similar start against Minnesota on Sunday, but Phoenix then, after leading by 15 after the first quarter, scored just 32 second half points and went three of 18 from downtown. How do you want them? to start strong here in the third. You know, this is, this is a Las Vegas team that has won 13 of their last 14 games. They're not gonna go away. They're gonna get a, even a little bit more ticked off here. They're gonna throw a punch. And I think for Vegas, they have to be patient, try to establish that inside game, which they're really good at, see if they can't get something going. Wilson puts it in to start the third. Following that buzzer beater by Tarothi to cap. 26 point first half. Too strong on her first shot in the second half. And a chance for Danielle Robinson to run. And fouled by Tarasi. It'll be her second personal. And after taking just six free throw attempts in the first half, the WNBA's number one free throw shooting team will start with two here. Good to see Daniel Robinson back on the floor. In case you joined us late, there was a question of whether Robinson would actually even play tonight, um, suffering through some headaches. So uh, obviously wearing a, a little neck pad area there, I'm sure it's keeping that um, trap area warm for her and loose. Just good to see her on the basketball court. And an important guard for Las Vegas, especially oh. off the bench with that second unit is second to none in this league. And she's now tasked with trying to stop Tarasi and commits the personal on the shot. And that'll be three more free throws for Diana Tarasi, who you want to say that James Harden really coined some of those little moves to draw the fouls and get to the line. But I mean, come on, I think they learned it from her. Absolutely, absolutely. We talk about uh... Who, who was your favorite player growing up? And there's no better uh, no better word to be said when you can have a, a Diana Taurasi, a Sue Bird, an Angel McCautry, Asia Wilson, you know, any of these WNBA players on, on the court that the youngsters that are out there trying to learn a game right now can follow and lead after. And she has so much respect from her NBA peers, Devin Booker, Damian Lillard, wearing some goat shirts in the bubble That's up in right. Orlando in the past couple of weeks. Those shirts on sale tomorrow. McCautry misfires. In it into the third quarter. How can Phoenix continue this hot offensive performance against one of the W's best defenses? Las Vegas only gives up 79 points per game and seeing what will be on sale tomorrow. That's clean. That's a clean shirt. You gotta like that. And it says it all real simple. I have a feeling those are going to sell quick, Leah. Yeah, totally. Sold out. And I will be online early before early. noon local time <laughs> here in Florida. A great item for a player who is coming off some injuries from last year and elevated her play as Kayla McBride elevates for the much needed Las Vegas jumper. Jatori Walker Kimbrough nearly has her pocket picked by McCautry. Rossi feeds inside and Turner finishes. Turner to Rossi. Now up to five assists. The only player top five in both points per game and assists per game this year. Wilson hit by the double. Immediately gets it back and is blocked by Turner. Lukatrido scoops it up and leaves it short. Diggins Smith fouled as she attacks. And that'll be on McCautry, her first. Angel McCautry is probably the key piece right now, Sean, that has not been able to get into the rhythm of this game tonight. Uh, offensively, 
for this Vegas team, uh, you know, and a key piece with from the three for the field goal percentage. And there is a three from Walker Kimbrough. Phoenix now has its largest lead of the game. McCautry whips it inside and another block. Second chance. Oh. Another turnover from Las Vegas. Just their sixth. Seems like some of those mistakes have been unforced tonight. Yeah, totally. And at that point, Daniel Robinson would have been better off just going up on her own. Trying to be unselfish there with that last pass. Diggin Smith buries another one and enforces a Las Vegas timeout. Firing on all cylinders. Phoenix has now hit 10 threes tonight. Unselfish play by the Phoenix Mercury as they continue to pass the ball, the extra pass. Skyler Digman Smith making a pay from three point land. Taking a look at what's coming up for Sandy Brondello and her Phoenix Mercury. A pretty favorable schedule down the stretch compared to some of those other teams. The Mercury currently locked into the number six seed. A couple more wins, they might be fighting for fourth or fifth. Yeah. The out of the timeout, misses. And a held ball call. As Brianna Turner continues to impress down low. Some quiet numbers compared to what she's put up these last couple of games, Leigh, but the fact that she's been on the floor and forced Asia Wilson to 6 to 14 shooting is a really a testament to her defense. Well, and, and everybody's playing a, a little bit different role right now, and, and certainly Turner understands that. And, I, and it's something that we were discussing during the break there. The, the limited number of players that Phoenix has had here the last few games especially they have really just 
grinded it down and come together as a unit. Uh, you know, whether it's playing for BG or, or playing for Bria Hartley, um, and they've discussed that as a team. And Sandy Brondella just says, you know, we keep getting better every day. You and I have had the luxury of having them a couple of times over this last few weeks, and you can see the improvement. You can see the cohesiveness. Sugar Rogers starts a pass inside, and Hamby blocked again. That's now 10 rejections by Phoenix tonight. Diggin Smith away from the screen. On the switch, gives it up to Vaughn. Rossi wants it, looking for a second 30-point game with her next point. Rises, won't go, and Wilson grabs the rebound. McCautry into the lane, nice. finishes this time around. She now has six points tonight. Use that high ball screen and just darted right by. Nice job. Much needed basket for confidence, certainly for the Aces. Diggin Smith slithers inside. Too strong. Vegas trying to run and cut into this deficit. And another bad pass. Diggin Smith up ahead, lays it in. Now 10 points off eight Vegas turnovers. But after leading by seven at the half, nearly midway through the third, it's now back down to an 11 point lead following the Hamby layup. And super lead in there, no foul called here. Robinson, oh, oh <laughs> not in my house, says Brianna Turner. Woo. Welcome to my block party. Just staying right in it, and no, no, no. Everybody's been invited tonight. Yeah. Now 14 blocks in her last five games. With a staple defensively at Notre Dame. Playing her best ball, she goes one-on-one -on -one with Hamby, but winds up committing her third personal. I think what you have to remember too, Leah, is Las Vegas doesn't take nor make a lot of three-point shots. No, they no. average 12, which is dead last in three-point attempts this year. They haven't really gotten to the line, so how do you want to see them come back where they've been taken out of their rhythm most of the night? Well, they, they need to get back to, to the to the line. The three, get three ball is not a big part of their game, uh, but getting to the free throw line certainly is, and Hamby has been doing what she can in her part and trying to get to the free throw line. Just keep dumping that ball inside and see if you can create some mismatches. Diggin Smith hits oh another one. That's her third three. She now has 15 points. I guess with Tarasi on the bench, somebody else needs to pick it up for three-point land, correct? Happy no inside. It was bumped with no whistle. She has 15 herself to go with nine rebounds. Both team highs for Las Vegas. Diggins Smith. Gets the foul called right as she released it. And yeah, get pulling back a Tarasi. To, get back to Hamby for a second. Um, you know, so her play gets sometimes lost with Asia Wilson, but she has really improved her offensive set at the opposite end of the floor uh, with some solid career high numbers. Great job in uh, try as Diana Tarasi will continue to get a little bit of a breather here. Foul on Robinson on the floor. Pass was tipped, but still up to Petty. Two on the shot clock, Alana Smith. Follows her miss and grabs the rebound. Three black jerseys collapse in and a reach in foul is called again on the Aces. Well, Smith got very fortunate with the way that that ball rebounded out two collapsing jerseys on the aces and she was able to kind of garner possession 
enough to have the foul picked up from Paul. Back to Smith. Nothing but air on that three-point attempt. But still, an incredible night for Phoenix from deep, shooting 46% from downtown. Six of their 11 threes made by Tarasi. Big reason why they've gone on this three-game win streak after losing three straight. They've now made 34 threes in their last three games. Hamby late in the shot clock. Can't hit first, second triple. Diggin' Smith with a full head of steam. Smart move by Walker Kimbrough, but not rewarded. Another offensive rebound. Rogers got a paw on it. Around the screen, Diggin' Smith into the lane, lobbed it up. Turner calls for the foul. And instead, on the back courts, Alana Smith picks up her third. The last foul to give for Phoenix in the quarter. Let's see if Las Vegas can take advantage now in the bonus. Starting to get a little physical in the, in the paint. And, uh, you know, part, in part with that, everybody's getting starting to get a little bit tired. Even with the limited numbers, Phoenix hasn't showed much fatigue. Rodgers can't end the Mercury run. Back out, Walker Kimbrough drills another one. 12 threes for Phoenix tonight. So far this year, they're 5-0 and they make 10 or more. Wilson hands off to McBride. Turner with her eighth rebound. Coming up on two minutes in the third. This ties the largest lead of the game by the Mercury. Barker Kimbrough penetrates, passes to Smith, and a good contest by Wilson. On the break, Jackie Young to the basket. Won't go after a couple of bounces. McBride banks it in, plus the foul. And Kayla McBride has really been working hard for this Aces team. Hit a couple of uh, big shots from the outside. Now driving hard to the basket, giving herself an opportunity here for the first time tonight at the free throw line, which uh, as we were just talking about, if uh, the Aces want to make a run here late in the third and into the fourth, They've got to be able to stop the clock and get to the line. A foul on Diggins Smith, her third personal. She and Turner each have three. Right back out, Walker Kimbrough with a nice fake. Floats it up, too strong. Jackie Young the rebound. Vegas trying to finish strong. Nice pass inside, but before the shot, Hamby travels. We have just seen Las Vegas been taken out of its rhythm the entire game. And after the entire month of August, where they really whipped right through the schedule going 11 and one. Give that much credit to the Mercury, who've won three straight, trying to make it four. Tarasi falling away. Up ahead, McBride loses the handle. That is now 10 turnovers by the team that turns it over the fewest amount of its possessions in the, in the WNBA this season. Forced to, to, you know, the plate at the pace that Phoenix is playing right now. The Mercury are dictating the tempo and forcing the Aces into a, a rushing situation on offense, trying to get down the court and transition before the matchup's going to happen. Dagan Smith was bumped but couldn't finish. If Las Vegas tries to go for a two for one in the final minute of the third quarter. McBride slips it to Hamby, goes up, and earns another trip to the line. Two of two already tonight. 
I like her aggressive play here. Watch McBride slips it once the defense turns their backs. And really, uh, Hamby's been extremely aggressive in trying to get to the hoop. A solid rebounder for this Vegas team this season. Coming alive here uh, on the offensive side, off the bench tonight to lead all bench scorers right now with 16 and has her fourth double-double. She's added 11 rebounds. The disruptor on both ends of the mm -hmm. floor, wreaking havoc, but splits the pair at the line. So about a six second differential. It was a 52-45 lead for Phoenix at the half. They've been strong and steady all night. They get Smith back to Vaughn. Wide open, cashes in another easy jumper. Final five, Young ahead of the pack. Lays it in with two seconds left. Rossi will not put up a heave at the buzzer. And it is a nine point Phoenix lead going into the fourth quarter. Vegas Aces trying to make a run as the ace of spades here as we head to the fourth quarter. They'll have to come back hard against this Phoenix Mercury team. The secret to success the last couple of games on this three-game win streak for Phoenix has been the deep ball. And now too shy their season high they set against Washington last Sunday. Main reason why they lead by nine. And you live and die by the three tonight? <laughs> Phoenix is living life by the three. Nothing dry in the valley just yet. Turner can't hit at the end of the shot clock. In Las Vegas' last game Saturday, they started the fourth quarter with a 21-2 run. And they start the fourth with an and one yep. by Jackie Young. Yep. 
Talk about getting the roll, working good off of the uh, off the screen high and a nice job in a little English. And that's what the Aces need right now, a little bit of English and opportunity to get to the free throw line. But uh, yeah, that recalling that victory against New York on Sunday. That certainly was the difference there in that fourth quarter of play because the Liberty were playing them toe to toe. And Tanisha Wright, the assistant coach for the Aces, lit into the team. Lit. Provided that spark to start that fourth quarter run. Megan Smith in trouble, has to hoist. And another solid possession. There's Jackie Young again, taking it herself the other way. And a polyball spike over to Tarasi. Wants it back. Still stuck on 29 points. McBride drives and was fouled by Tarasi. Uh, certainly willing to contest her third personal foul. There is Tanisha Wright and that was what was funny, Asia Wilson some of her other teammates were laughing about, yeah, you know, they. she was calling us some mean names, but, mm -hmm. you know, kind of woke us up when we were tied at 56, eventually won 80 to 63. That was the fewest points they allowed this year. And already, Phoenix was 73 tonight, just six shy of the season average that is allowed by Las Vegas this year. Down to a five-point game. And the foul drawn by Diggin Smith will put her back yeah. at the line. And was going to say, Lihit, the reason why Las Vegas has gotten back into this game, <laughs> they were getting to the line. They're being aggressive, like you said, yeah. starting at the end of the third. But we've seen a couple of those really smart, crafty moves by Tarasi and Diggin Smith to help give a breather for this Phoenix club. Yeah, totally, and, and Diggin Smith kind of leaning in and being able to get that call there, and uh, you know, already three players in double figures for the Mercury. She had 13 fourth quarter points and a four point win against Minnesota Sunday. And splits the pair to make it a six point game. Young powers up, and the bounces fall right into the hands of Turner. 11 rebounds for the forward. Quickly, another foul called. This will be the third on Young. What a couple of games these two teams have played. Las Vegas trying to move into a tie in first place with Seattle. Meanwhile, Phoenix trying to extend its three-game win streak. Megan Smith with a solid fake. Shuffled her feet before she put it on the floor. At just the sixth turnover by Phoenix tonight. Yeah, they've done it. They've done a great, great job of taking care of the basketball tonight. And as Sandy Brandello looks on, and you know, you, you start controlling your possessions and protecting the rock, you, you're going to have great success and rebounding. Limiting turnovers. Great pass from McBride to Hamby, and it's down to four. Megan Smith around the defense. Dishes back to Vaughn, and she hits it again from her sweet spot. Eight points for Vaughn, and three of her four jumpers have been from there. And Hamby moving too quickly, dribbles it off her knee out of bounds. Diggin Smith with a hand in her face, too strong, but Vaughn there to clean up the miss. A crucial second chance basket. Bride working against Tarasi. Young with a nice ball fake and is rewarded with the open jumper. No, 
Young has 15, her eighth game in double figures this year. Gone on the slip attacks and lays in it again. That's Kia now Vaughan. six straight. Ben on the elbow, second chance opportunities on the elbow, moving in and out away from the basket, trying to create some separation. And it feels, Sean, like she's got more than four boards tonight, the way that she has attacked the basket. The way Phoenix has defended Asia Wilson, although I don't know how she got that one to drop. 15 points for the WNBA second leading score. Vaughn, why not? Robinson with the lane. This fires. Tough angle. Walker Kimbrough behind the line. Drains another one. Her third three, she has 15 points. And a big five point swing. Front of Tarasi with, with swinging that ball to the opposite side of the floor, seeing the play develop, wide open shot. Very simple. Phoenix, they've Las Vegas, a poor end of the month of July. Trying to give them a bad start to September. Vaughn, a little heat check there on the jumper. Robinson trying to settle things down midway through the fourth. And Wilfton called on the push off. Phoenix continues to lead, trying to finish this one out with a nine-point lead. This copyrighted telecast of WNBA Enterprises may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise used in any form without the express written consent of WNBA Enterprises. as Phoenix leads by nine. Leah, they led by seven at the half thanks to Diana Taurasi's 26 points. She's only scored three here in the second half and hasn't really needed to add much to that total because she's been no. picked up by her teammates. Totally. Nice compliment for the rest of the team on the floor and, and at key times, whether it was 
Skylar Diggin Smith or Walker Kimbrough with a big bucket or Kia Vaughn, who uh, also has contributed and now has 12. Vaughn has six fourth quarter points and gives it back to Tarasi. Inside to Turner. Back to Vaughn. Can't hit at the end of the shot clock. Vegas cut it to four earlier, but a strong spurt has kicked it back up to nine. McCautry weaves inside. Denied again by Turner. The second chance by Wilson won't go. But she'll head to the line for just the second time tonight. The WNBA's leader and free throws attempted and free throws made this year. Yeah, nice job in just kind of waiting and attacking the glass, getting up over Vaughn there and that foul call to get to the free throw line. Couldn't get it to fall, but she'll shoot two. And now two and two at the charity stripe tonight. Las Vegas has been trailing ever since the four minute mark of the second quarter. Mercury trying to put a finish on another big win and sweep the season series. Diggins Smith splits the double team and gets it to drop. 18 points for Skyler Diggins Smith. Two away from her seventh 20 point game this year. McBride taking it off the dribble. Tough angle won't go. Tarasi. With a big basket, just her second one of the second half, but she now collects her second 30-point game this year. A big-time basket to stretch the lead back to 12. Young hits the end one. Like the aggressiveness of, of Young, we watched her defensively uh, not be in awe, so to speak, of Diana Taurasi's play and picking up a foul on the backcourt, responding here a couple of plays later, aggressively going to the basket and completing the three-point play. Three points the hard way, and 18 on the night for Jackie Young. For a Las Vegas team that doesn't shoot or make a lot of three-pointers. They need some stops on this end with just three minutes to play. Diggins Smith earns a trip to the foul line. 91% foul shooter, top 10 in the WNBA this year in that category. And certainly an uphill battle for Bill Lambert, who I think has had a couple of more hairs turn gray on that head tonight. <laughs> His defense gave up a season high 102 points in the meeting on July 31st. And ever since that game, his team has only allowed more than 85 one time. Make it two. Phoenix leads 90 to 79 against the WNBA's number two team. Wilson calls for it with the fake created the separation. You know, I credit Turner there on the box out. There wasn't even a chance for Wilson to be able to try to figure out an offensive board for a putback. Good box out. Pass taken away by Hamby. Vaughn inadvertently kicks it. 2.32 left. Las Vegas looking for the comeback when we return.
Skylar Diggins now has her seventh 20-point game of the season. And Leah, she has done a lot of damage in the second half to keep Phoenix ahead. And, and most of her damage, you know, she started off, Sean, uh, with a lot of three balls, but then said, you know what? I'm gonna drive to the hoop, commanding the offense, running the attack for Phoenix, really keeping uh, the aces off guard by what she's doing out on the floor, whether it's distributing the basketball, lighting it up from three, or taking it directly to the basket and getting to the free throw line as well. Those seven assists, have also been crucial down the stretch in the fourth quarter. And one of the biggest acquisitions in the offseason, playing like a true vet as Phoenix trying to continue some of its best, best play this year. They ride short, offensive rebound, McCautry muscling inside before the shots. Diana Taurasi called for her fourth foul. And the fifth team foul on Phoenix in the quarter. We'll have Las Vegas in the bonus for the final 215. McCautry, who has the number one PER in the WNBA this year at 29. An incredible number, but she struggled tonight. Much in part to that Phoenix front court that has made everything tough on the block. It's a nine-point game after the free throws. The full court pressure quickly backs off. No room for error now for Las Vegas. Tarasi nice. feeds it back to Vaughn. And a dagger! Kia Vaughn coming alive in the fourth quarter. Diana Tarasi recognized that, Sean. The double team came up towards her, left Vaughn wide open down on the uh, baseline for that shot. Young attacks and hits another one. She has 20 points tonight. A great offensive effort. It was Phoenix's offense that has proved to be a little bit better. Tarasi can't hit another one. Already hit seven threes tonight to tie a season high. McBride tosses it up and puts it in. Seven point game, Young steals the inbound. McBride gets it back and can't hit. Would have been a big basket coming up on a minute to play. He commits a frustration foul in the backcourt. Intensity on the inbounds pass and who is there, but Young once again, we talked about her play in the second half, Sean. Uh, she has been all over the floor, making some big plays defensively, getting to the line as well. First foul in the last two minutes on Las Vegas. Phoenix just running clock for now. Tarasi can't hit a new season high. Just six second half points for the GOAT, but really picked up by her teammates, especially in this fourth quarter when the lead got down to four. And in less than a minute, they got it back to eight. Sugar Rogers leaves it short and the shot clock turned off. What an effort by Phoenix. And you can see the emotion from Diana Taurasi for her club's fourth straight win. And giving it to Vaughn, the fourth quarter hero. Eight in the final period for Vaughn. And it proves to be the difference in a 92-85 Phoenix win over Las Vegas. And after the shot clock violation, that's it. Phoenix improves to 10 and 7 on the year. Las Vegas drops to 12 and 4. We'll take a quick timeout and wrap things up when we come back following a big fourth quarter by Kia Vaughn.
Phoenix with a clutch win down the stretch to win it 92-85 to pick up their fourth straight win. It looked like the sky was falling when they dropped a six and seven, but they picked themselves back up, Leah, and are just a couple of wins away from clinching a playoff spot. You, you want to talk about taking momentum down the stretch. Uh, Mercury are gliding downhill right now, full force with the way that they are playing. And again, adversity has risen them to cohesiveness on the floor. And it all started with Diana Taurasi lighting it up three-point land, giving this team confidence. And then the wealth spread from everyone else on the floor, especially Brianna Turner with those 13 rebounds tonight, helping to stop this very potent Aces offense. Another impressive performance by this Phoenix team that has been shorthanded but not short of hearts. 92-85, our final score is Diana Taurasi leads the way with 32 points. And it's now four straight wins for Phoenix. We'll be back with more WNBA action tomorrow. But for now, for Leah Secondo and our entire crew, I'm Sean Salisbury saying so long and good night from Bradenton.